Debbie O'Brien, welcome to the show. Hey everyone, welcome. <laughs> Thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, this is the very first uh, Tailwind Labs Tailwind, Tailwind Talk live stream. This is my very first live stream. I think one of Debbie's first live streams. So let's see what happens. As you can see, we try to engage the comments. So please ask questions and engage. Uh, and I think before we start, Debbie, why don't you give a little overview of who you are, what you do, and also what time zone you are in and what time it is right now. So it's bedtime right now. I should be in my bed. My phone has told me to go to bed. So yeah, it's uh, almost midnight. Um, I'm in Spain, in Mallorca. And yeah, my name is Debbie O'Brien. I work at Nux.js as head of learning and developer advocate. Nice, beautiful. Um, so about two or three weeks ago, I put a little feeler out there on Twitter to see who wanted to do a live stream with me talking about Tailwind CSS and their experience. And you came with a really interesting topic, which was how do you convince your team of developers and your boss and people around you to use something like Tailwind CSS, which I can relate to. And I think is a great topic. Uh, we're going to have great discussions. But I think before we can convince someone, we kind of have to convince ourselves, right? Uh, so can you remember the very first time you saw Tailwind CSS or maybe another utility first uh, library? And how was your first reaction and how did you convince yourself in the first place? Yeah, do you know, I actually don't remember the day I first heard about Tailwind and I can't remember, yeah. was that a conference or it was a tweet? I, I don't know because it's so long ago. And um, I've worked with it CSS for many, many years. So I was like, you know, I had, uh, I learned JavaScript recently in the last couple of years, but CSS was something I was very, very good at. And I was very good at SAS. We built our own component libraries in the past. Um, so I've experienced quite a lot. So when Tailwind came about, it was a matter of like, okay, this is interesting. I've got to try it out because I've pretty much tried everything else out. Um, so obviously you want to try everything out that's new, right? And Tailwind was very, very new at this time and not many people had heard about it. So it was like, let's try it out and basically see what it's like. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was your first reaction? Because I think there's, a, there's an almost uh, mandatory first uh, feeling of disgust and like gut, gut reaction when you see it, especially if you've yeah. been working with different CSS approaches and uh, mindsets before. Yeah, so I didn't like it at first, <laughs> I'll okay. be honest. No, I don't think anyone um, does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I pretty much kind of went, um, okay, what's this doing to my HTML? It's like just, it's a mess now. I can't like, you know, I, I, I don't know. I didn't really like it, but you know, there's a lot of things. I didn't like Nuxt at first when I first started using Nuxt, you know, <laughs> until you understand how things work and actually really start playing with it, you kind of don't then actually appreciate what it's doing for you. So what I had to do, I was working on a project where it was an e-commerce project and I was leading the project. Now I was pretty much new to leading. So I was like kind of going, oh my God, I'm going to lead something and I need to be very, very sure that I'm choosing the right technology, right? Yep. So I prototyped uh, every single CSS library I'd pretty much used or come across that could, I considered could be um, a valid player in this, um, in this project. So of course, Bootstrap, Beautify, um, it was um, everything you could think of, uh, even just like plain CSS, everything and Tailwind and did all these, the same project, the same website, um, repeated it with every framework, then ran yep. analyst tests on it, performance tests on it nice. uh, and did a whole kind of like report. I should have wrote a blog post on it. I, Absolutely. I didn't even think about it back then, you know? Um, and yeah, it was like one of the killer things for me was performance, that Tailwind was coming out more performant than the rest and less CSS, which is surprising, right? Because you think at first, you know, you're getting all this, all these classes that you don't want and you're getting them all. And then you're like, I don't want all of them. But then you realize that actually it's getting, you're getting less, especially using purge CSS, for example. Um, so yeah, Tailwind came out as the most performant. So then it was a matter of saying, right, okay, is it the best? Because, you know, performance is great, but it's not all just about performance. So we had to kind of look at, you know, okay, I've got it. It's not going to be me that's actually going to be doing the work on this project, right? It's going to be a team of developers. So mm -hmm. I've got to like think, right? Um, I now need to like make it as in ease of use has got to be good because all my developers know is is Bootstrap and SaaS and you know what everyone else knows, BAM, etc. So. I had to kind of like say, okay, so if we're going to use this, is this going to be better and quicker than building with Bootstrap? Right. 
So that was another thing I had to look at. And Bootstrap is easy because you like copy and paste the components in. So Bootstrap was kind of like, yeah, okay. So Bootstrap was winning on that kind of scale. And then Tailwind was something they were going to have to learn as new. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay. So that's kind of, you know, it was, it was close, but Bootstrap was going to be quicker to develop with in a way at the in start, <laughs> right? Yeah, in a way. Uh, one of the problems was that I had also worked on a massive project where um, we had to update Bootstrap. And updating a version of Bootstrap from one to the other was breaking changes in such a bad way that it was painful. So that was kind of like, okay, so Bootstrap has its negativity as well, right? Now, one of the interesting things, and this is what kind of won Tailwind over for me was that I could actually get rid of Tailwind if I wanted to after creating the project with Tailwind. So imagine Tailwind died, right? Remember Tailwind is at version zero right now at that point. So yeah. imagine that Tailwind died, it wasn't gonna make it to version one. Um, what was gonna happen? Well, you basically like could just get all your CSS, right? Copy that CSS. Um, create that main CSS file and you still have your application running. So you could actually take CS, take Tailwind out and your project still works. You can't do that with Bootstrap. It's like impossible. You have to like reconstruct everything. It takes so much time. I mean, I've done it. It's a lot of work, but with mm -hmm. Tailwind, you can actually eject it and use it if you want to do. Not that you would, but um, that was kind of like a killer feature in the sense of actually this is just utilities because these CSS classes have not just being created by some developer um, on a team that's, you know, when you're working with a big team of people, they're creating class names that, ha that have no meaning, like product card and the product card changes. And now it's a, a title card and something else called a, a featured product card. And you don't know what yep. it is in the end because it's not featured, right? So yeah, that was that's kind of a weird way of um, <laughs> explaining it. But basically, yeah, we could get rid of Tailwind easily, which was one of the features that helped me be able to sell it to the developers. Nice. That's great. It's interesting because you touched on two <laughs> points that are uh, key into the, the initial reaction. Like the performance thing is something you almost hear in every discussion on someone who hasn't tried Tailwind yet is like, but what about all these classes in your HTML and the, the, the file size that you ship over the wire? And there's, there's always that, that feeling that it's going to be a non-performant way. And when you look under the hood with gzip and like, everything is actually tailored made to be more performance than like traditional ways of having nested specific CSS. And the other one is the productivity. Yeah. I, I hear often people say it's going to take my team like forever to learn a completely new paradigm. You have to learn the whole CSS mapped to class names, which is kind of true, but in a way when you do it, because it's so intuitive and repetitive, you, my personal experience uh, with Tailwind was about three or four days of like, referring to the docs and then you get to a point where you you start just guessing what the the class is going to be not always but most of the time and then you're off to the races yeah completely and uh when it comes to performance like um if you run css stats that's what i was using it um and yep. it's very very good because you can literally see all the like unused classes right unused css and i was working for a massive company whose css was a mess and like literally we did not know if that css file was being used or not it was being imported but was that class being used and inside that class we had like display flex and you had well you know all the kind of utilities that you would normally use they're being repeated over all these um other css files mm -hmm. so that display flex that um font weight how many times are you repeating that font weight across your css right yeah. and that's in a class and now we've got 500 classes just to kind of like put the font weight of this um, title or product card title or whatever inside our CSS, right? Whereas with Tailwind, yes, we're putting it inside the HTML, et cetera, but it's really kind of only coming out in one place. Yep. And I think that's what people are not really understanding. The complexity is going to have to live somewhere and people are used to have super clean HTML that you really look after and the CSS, like all bets are off and you can just add stuff at the bottom and do all the hacks you want. and. In a sense, when you when you move that complexity to the HTML, it kind of enforces you to to keep it clean because no one wants to have uh, 600 lines of unused HTML on a page. But in CSS, it's completely normal to have like, oh, this this is I'm not sure I should remove this because maybe someone uses it somewhere else. And it's acceptable in the CSS file to have a bunch of stuff that you're not even sure if it's used. But no one would have a yeah. 
uncommented HTML somewhere, like, you know what I mean? Exactly. Like having 200 lines of CSS in your, in your product card, for example, component is mm -hmm. considered normal, yep. right? And, and like all the CSS down there, and that's perfect because it looks beautiful, but putting, um, I don't know, a quarter of that or less than a quarter of that into your HTML as, as classes is considered bad, right? As in like, no, that's terrible. But then you look mm -hmm. at your CSS at the bottom and I'm working with Vue, right? So every, everything is in the one file. I very rarely write CSS. Like Tailwind pretty much covers all my yep. use cases, unless I'm doing some sort of animations or something like extra out of the ordinary, but pretty much utilities take up everything, almost everything. So I literally have empty CSS files. What that does is it makes it very easy to maintain and maintenance is key when you're working in large scale uh, projects. Because when you have had experience of maintaining so many CSS files with so much CSS and you just don't know what's going on and one is overriding the other, et cetera. Um, I mean, okay, now we're using like say scoped styling in view, et cetera. And, but you still, um, if you have like the CSS class at the bottom, so dot title, uh, product, dot product card, dot whatever, blah, mm -hmm. you might remove it from your HTML and not remove it from the CSS. You're still loading the class. The class is still there. So yep. there's a lot of things going on. Whereas at least if it's in the HTML, right? As a Tailwind class, you can going to see it unless you remove it. If you remove it, it's gone. If you don't, if, if you don't remove it, you're always going to see it. Whereas that's not the case, um, in the actual normal files. Yep. Totally agree with that. Um, tell me more about, so that's your experience. And then when you, you approach your team colleagues with, with that approach, did they observe the same? Like, I, I'm sure, first of all, some people said, nah, we're not using this. And I myself reviewed uh, another utility CSS framework and said, nah, <laughs> I don't want to use this. This is wrong. <clears throat> but do you, did you experience the, the same learning curve for them or did they have different experiences? So I'd been teaching um, CSS for m many teams in the past. So I had an experience nice. as well of like introducing SAS, introducing SAS maps. Uh, introducing BEM, introducing like, you know, all different kind of ways. And I remember doing one experiment with a team of developers. And this is actually a really, really cool experiment. You take them into one room. Okay, now we can't go into a room. So imagine a virtual room, right? <laughs> and, and you say, you give them like a product card, a really nice product card with lots of detail um, yeah. from Photoshop or whatever, or from Sketch. And you say, create that as a team, right? So you put the three developers together and you say, create this. Um, what's happening is, they all start to go, okay, so we're going to use BEM, right? So, uh, this is the, this is product card, right? This is the product title. No, that's not the title. Cause here, is that the title? Okay. This is going to be the, and everything becomes a naming problem, right? Yeah. Naming is one of the most difficult things. So they spend so much time thinking about the naming, then thinking about the, the BEM, which is the element. Is that the element of that block? But is that a block of this block? And is this block inside that block? And it was a really interesting experiment because I like, sat in the corner and just watched and I, I was like, this is not a test. You just, just do your job. Like this is really, this is just feedback. And I learned a lot from that experiment. So when I went to uh, teaching Tailwind and I was like, I introduced it first in the, the team meeting and I said, right, um, this is a really amazing utility first framework and I, we're going to use this and it's going to be great. And I want you to all learn this. And, and they all just kind of looked as if say like, you're crazy. Like, mm -hmm. you know, this, this. <laughs> This, this, looks, this is a mess. There's no way I, I'm not, I don't want to use that. And I said, okay, I said, and I gave my points and said, look, um, we can actually just delete that file and never use it again. So we're not stuck to it. Like we had all that problems with bootstrap, right? So we don't have that. Um, yes, it's new. Uh, the documentation is here and we're going to have to like, you know, go to the documentation a little bit every now and again. I said, but I want you to try it for two weeks. I said, if in two weeks time, you as developer decide you don't want to use tailwind then we will use Bootstrap. No problem. So they nice. were like, all right, I can do it for two weeks. So they did it for two weeks. Um, the productivity went like through the roof and they just like, they never even kind of said, oh, the two weeks is over. Like that conversation never happened. As if they, <laughs> just like, like blended in. Yeah. <laughs> it just, it just became, and then like the rest of it was their choice. They constantly chose to use Tailwind in all future projects. I never made any other decision after that day um, or told the team what they were going to use it never even came into the conversation. It was just like, yeah, of course we're going to use Tailwind. It was like, you know, it was a no-brainer. Good stuff. I uh, I usually refer to a 
a blog post, I think it's from Pete Hunt that says it's called give it five minutes. And it's more about like when you have this gut reaction, not with utility first, uh, it was in the context of React and JSX and people saying the same, like why would you put HTML in your mm -hmm. JavaScript? And the whole mantra of, I like the two weeks because in two weeks you know that they're going to go, to go through the productivity hump and be like, oh, wait a minute, this is actually useful and realize all the benefits that you simply cannot. Uh, you see all these discussions of people like hell bent on saying why it's not good. And unless you try it yourself for more than five minutes, I'd say two weeks is a good time. Uh, you will never actually be able to realize that. So it's nice that you kind of say, hey, let's, here's the challenge. The, as a company, two week is not gonna sink and make the company fold over, I guess. And if mm -hmm. you come out on the other way positive, which it sounds like you did, you, you more than recover these two weeks in productivity, like for the rest of days, I guess. Yeah, for sure. And and once you have the developers on board and they're like, you know, um, convinced that it works, um, then it's easy just to move forward because they're like, get excited about it and they start like learning it more and they start kind of like showing each other the cool things and it makes it, it's not just you showing everyone, it's like now their product, it's now their framework, they're using it. Yeah. And like, because the config file, you can just do whatever you want with it. So like, like I told them, if you don't like what Tailwind's giving you, we can just create our own and just use Tailwind as our own. And we can like completely create our own margins, our own paddings, our own everything. And they were like, oh, I like this. So they got to kind of like have this freedom, right? That you don't normally have with some CSS frameworks Absolutely, where you kind of like yeah. stuck to just this. Did you, uh, so that was did you have conversation with designers as well within the team? Because I think that config file and being able to map your design tokens to what gets generated is super powerful. Like designers, like... When they connect with that the concept, they really start liking it. Yeah, so we had like a weird kind of situation because we had a designer who was like a UX designer, right? And that person came from um, a background of programming. So originally like say kind of a you know front end developer, but now completely focused in UI UX, yep. but hasn't touched code in so long. So it was like, you know, really like, oh, don't, don't remember what I'm doing, but I kind of like can go into the Chrome dev tools and play around. So. We were constantly like um, saying like, yeah, no, no, this is like, this is how we're doing it. So he was lost in Tailwind, right? Because he was like, oh, I don't know how to, whoa, what's going on here? So we just like create his own classes. And then we go like, let's convert that now into Tailwind, right? Because he couldn't play with it because he didn't understand it. And he was yeah. stuck with this like, right. And he would come to my desk and literally like, okay, open Chrome DevTools, right? Let's, and then just like literally um, play around with everything. And he would recreate that, um, say product card um with his css classes which then i would then translate back into tailwind and sometimes i have to like screenshot the actual the chrome window right of the dev tools or yeah. try and save it as kind of a local save and then like reconstruct it so that was kind of a real it was really hard i guess working with a designer because the designer didn't have access didn't understand the code and was kind of like stuck with a way of how to like you know play with tailwind i guess great uh, so it sounds like uh, there was a, a success, like everyone got uh, convinced and moved on with it. Did you notice like a specific area of friction, uh, specifically at the start? Like not not the whole uh, semantic class names are bad, like, uh, unsemantic class names, but more like in the implementation and onboarding, did you notice something uh, that was slowing down people or like giving them doubts? Um, I don't think so in general. And I, I brought it across to a load of teams. So it wasn't just the one team I was working with. I was working then yeah. on another another massive project, which was a hotel chain. And they were using AEM, which is Adobe Experience Manager, um, which is Which injects a lot of anyway. uh, classes in your markup, right? You it can't control- It gives you bootstrap yeah. automatically and jQuery oh. automatically included. Oh, wow, okay. More than I thought. Right? <laughs> it's horrible. It's completely horrible. Now it does great things for marketing and stuff. So I sure. get why people want to use it. I know it has its good points, but- um, one of the um, problems that this company was having was performance. Performance for them was key. And they asked me, they put me in lead of it to make sure the site was performant. So obviously I tr told them use Nuxt and they were like, no, we're going to use AEM. I was like, okay, fair enough. So it's never going to be very performant because you've already got this, right? Um, so now we're going to have to really focus on trying to make it as performant as possible. And I said, two things you are not allowed to use and that's Bootstrap and jQuery, get them out. <laughs> like you're not using them. So they were like panicking because they are AEM developers. They know jQuery and they yeah, know yeah, Bootstrap course. very, very, very well. So I was like, you can't use them. And the company that was uh, employing me kind of like said, well, whatever she says, 
you gotta do. <laughs> so that gave me a lot of power, which was great. But it was like, literally, I've never worked with AEM. I don't know if these developers are gonna um, be able to use Tailwind and have success in it or not, course, but yeah. this is what I believe in. And I've got to get that across and kind of almost force them, right? So. So yeah, I basically said, right, this is what we're going to use. This is Tailwind. Um, and it's obviously vanilla JavaScript for the JavaScript. Um, I did a very quick course with them and kind of showed them how to use it. They were like, oh my God, but like, you know, this is going to slow us down. We're going to take so long to be able to build stuff. Like, you know, we're so quick at bootstrap. We know what we're doing and you're making us learn something new and we don't know this and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, don't worry about it performance just think about performance and like i just kind of like kind of went yeah it's go you're going to get slow it's going to be very slow it's going to be very hard for you yeah i understand mm -hmm. i get it because then they kind of feel like you know i'm not just throwing something on them and saying it's easy and you, you know it's like yeah it's going to be a challenge but you know you'll be fine and then after like a while they actually came they actually came and said to me um wow it's i'm really glad we use tailwind because we've been able to get stuff done so much quicker and i was like yes <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't say like I told you so, right? Because <laughs> they wouldn't have that. You think but you um, yeah, but literally, like, especially for the like paddings and margins and all that kind of, because they had like their AEM classes for all the components and stuff, you know? So mm -hmm. it's using Tailwind at a very minimum level, really kind of like pageant, paddings, margins, and yep. border shadows and things like that. But they said, yep, fantastic. Like they had a great experience out of it. So, so that was kind of really cool to see it in an AEM project as well. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, I think what you just said at the end is, is a very nice onboarding trick is to tell people, hey, just sprinkle, let's start with paddings and margins. And if you've seen that tweet about two weeks ago, someone did a, a graph of the how many times each Tailwind utility classes is used across like all the Tailwind websites out there. And margins and padding are like 10 times more than the third one, which I'm not sure what it is, probably a width or height or... But margin padding are like what people yeah. bread and butter like they they use and i myself when i tried to convert a site from bem to to uh, utility first css i started thinking i'm just gonna start with margin and padding and then very quickly you're like oh maybe the box shadow should also like it's quite easy to have a utility for a specific box shadow you want to reuse and then ah what about the the font size and line height and you you just creep into the territory where suddenly you're like hang on if I have uh, layout primitives like flex and grid, and then I have all the colors and borders and sizes, I can I do not need anything else. Like you said at the start, like I, I realized yeah. I can do all of it. And then if I need to just reverse the thing, like if I need some custom CSS, I'll add it on top, a sprinkle custom CSS at the end, instead of trying to sprinkle utilities on my beautifully BAM creation. And yeah, it's, it's a nice way to, to progressively ease into it. Do you have any? And then they say, yeah. and then they say like, oh, I don't have to write a class name anymore. Oh, like, and that's, I think one of the things mm -hmm. that makes it so fast as well is that you're not having to write namings. You're just, you know, yep. this div. If you, imagine if you didn't have to write cl class names ever. You just got div one, div two, div three, blah, 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 blah. You would be so much faster, right? You would never know what's going on in your CSS. You would never be able to relate back to it, right? The mm -hmm. class is what relates back to it. If you've got that right there, um, it's just much easier. Yeah, it's, it's again one of these, uh, you have to experience it to realize that the the liberation of being in one HTML file or a React component or like a piece of HTML and you're in there mm -hmm. and whatever you do to this will never affect anything else than this. You will never like yeah. change a class and maybe another page is using because it's, it's, the H, it's the markup that you're working on. So this is that thing is there and nowhere else. And the liberation yeah. of working in one file without switching context between different files and not naming things together, you just, the productivity is, is incredible. And you, you can't look at something like Tailwind if you've never used it and, and see these things. All you see is like this like vomit of class names and stuff that breaks the web because there's design concerns in the HTML. And it's only when you go through that initial thing that you realize, hang on, this is actually super productive and safe, like, you, you get the confidence and the speed of not naming things. So, yeah. Yeah. I think people have to try it and, and, you know, it's like literally you can't just try it in a day and then say, decide, oh, I don't like it. Like if you're going to try something, really try it, really like build something on it, get comfortable with it. And then you'll be able to go, okay, now I really don't like it because I've tried it or wow, this is actually amazing. And I really like it. And maybe it's not for every project, but I've used it on major projects 
on teams that are like allocated in different parts of the world that are working on, you know, the same project. And it's very easy for them to contribute from in that one page in that one product card in that one anything because everyone's naming is the same, right? It's not like, yeah. oh, he named it title and he named it this. And then you go somewhere else and it doesn't just, you can know that it's written by like 20 different people, right? Yeah. Whereas with Tailwind, it looks like it's all written by one person, which makes it easy to understand by anyone. Yeah, you, you think of the, the benefits of using Tailwind across multiple projects for an agency, but even within one project, if there's multiple people working on this, mm -hmm. it, within the same project, you already have these different flavors of naming. And uh, I've, I've certainly observed that. Yeah. yeah. And in, um, in the config file, you yeah. once you have that config file set up, so imagine you have all your paddings and all your box shadows, everything set up, like literally that config file can then be reused in another project. So when you're starting that next project, you've pretty much got your base set up exactly how you would. And then you, you know what you're changing. You change those minor few things and you've got like, because we were working on a lot of landing pages for like hotels. So they have the kind, same color scheme, they have the kind of same everything, mm -hmm. but little minor differences and stuff. You've got that one thing set up, bang, your developers are just ready to go. Another site created, bang, done. Yep. Um, did you ever, when introducing people to Tailwind, uh, recommend if you f you could sense they were really against the whole uh, smashing 25 class names in a button did you ever uh, tell them hey maybe you can start with this at apply thing that lets you abstract your you so you s you have your like cushion of comfort zone did you did you try to ease them that way or say just this is a tool but just try to embrace the mindset and go all in html i actually did it the other day with one of our team in nuxt one yep. of the guys is like you know oh no, it's like too much, too mm -hmm. much stuff. I can't cope. And I was like, just use apply. And um, I, I'm not sure if he was listening to me or not, but um, but yeah, in work as well, um, in my previous jobs, we did use the apply. I use the apply quite a lot and I actually like it for certain reasons because mm -hmm. then I could put it, extract certain classes out and put them in another file so that I'm not repeating, you know, because sometimes it's not a component that you want. Sometimes it could be like a specific box shadow, uh, et cetera. And you can take that, apply that out and put that into others. And then you're just applying that class of, say, say box shadow, for example. So there's kind of um, probably using a terrible example, but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So instead of using a component, you can take the apply out. Now, probably you probably don't like apply. I don't think I think you're one of the non apply people, um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm an apply fan. I just think it really okay. is useful. I yeah. like it. I mean, it's a tool and it's there for a reason. Um, I, I myself always, always try to go the abstract at the markup level. So I have a template partial or a component if you have the luxury to have React or Next or Next. Uh, but uh, funny, funny story, I, I got into utility for CSS uh, a little, just a bit before ta Tailwind, the first version came out. And uh, when I saw Tailwind and I saw that at apply, I think, I don't know if Adam's watching, but I, I sent him a DM and I said, isn't that just like a, a way to onboard people to, to get over the fear, but you technically don't really use it? And you, he, he said to me, like, I, I literally almost never use it, maybe for buttons and form elements and some stuff where it makes a lot of sense. But it's, it's technically, yes, a, a way to give a chance for people to try it and have that comfort. And then they realize, oh, actually, the... The duplication uh, from the HTML is moving there, and then, then you get you get into some situations where you you create complexity through that instead of in the HTML. And uh, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with using it, and we've uh, if you don't overuse it, Adam and you Robin have, to have use it right. yes, but it's it's one of the uh, frustrations what you couldn't use hover states or media queries within the same apply, and now you can do all of this in one apply declaration. Yeah. So it's. It's actually a really good tool and uh, I've actually once uh, done a website and just for fun, I didn't even have class names. I, I decided to use add apply on the HTML element itself to have a completely Zen garden HTML markup with zero class names. And then in the, in the dev tools, when you open the thing, there was a little message say, hey, did you know this site is built with Tailwind 100% with utility classes? And you don't have to have a vomit, verbal vomit of uh, class names to have a yeah. Tailwind site working. Yeah, everything is possible. Um, I guess it's finding what works for you and what people are comfortable with. And and as yeah. like, especially like, you know, the apply one can seriously take out if you have a lot of a lot of those classes going on, you can take them out and obviously like, you know, make it makes you feel better. Um, then that's great, right? Um, but 
I don't know. Um, I use apply every now and again. I don't use apply on every single file, but I do use it every now and again. Um, but I haven't used anything other than Tailwind for probably two years now. Like literally, yeah. <laughs> like I don't remember the last time I used any other CSS um, library. I've just kind of like been converting everything out of Bootstrap, sorry, Bootstrap, <laughs> and into like Tailwind. Yeah, um, it's, it's definitely a mindset. And uh, I think uh, you hear that often as well. Sometimes people see the benefits when they use Tailwind and most people see the benefits when they use Tailwind but it only really clicks when they have to go back to uh, another site that they built with something else. And it's, it's, it, I'm not saying someone handing off a 10 year old mm -hmm. legacy project with really terrible CSS, like something that you wrote yourself really, really well, like not that long ago, if you go back, this is when it hits because you keep have to jump in different uh, files. And whenever you wanna just change some spacing on one element, you have to have that thought process like, do I want to create like a BAM modifier for this? Or is there one existing? Should I search for it? Or, or, you know, I just go at the bottom of the file and just add like my like weird class name that just going to be used once. And when you do this, you're like, this, this, I, I wish I could do it a different way. And that's when you really realize the power of Tailwind, at least for me. Yeah, especially when you have to work in an Angular project. And um, <laughs> I've had to work in Angular and Angular is like, everything's separated, right? So I was literally like going back and forth between like, you know, files, HTML here, opening the, the CSS, go back into the HTML, go back to here, change that. It was it was a nightmare, right? I'm um, used to kind of working with Nuxt where everything's at least in the one. And when you're working with Nuxt review, you have like everything in the one file, which makes it easier. Yep. But you can still like, um, like you can still make it easier because you're just basically in that HTML. You're just at the top. And it's just like, I kind of almost... Uh, compare it to using like the Chrome Dev Tools, right? When you're using the Chrome Dev Tools to modify something, you're just in one area. You're not switching back and forth. Yeah, and which is why people cool. like, especially designers, like to play around with values in in the the Dev Tools because you get the instant feedback loop. Question exactly. for it's you: Quick and easy. And fine. Yeah. If you today uh, had to demo mm -hmm. Tailwind to a new team, which you might have to, what would be your approach to just give them like the Hey, I'll d just do a quick demo. Let's let's take it for a spin. How how do you usually approach that? Um, so usually I would like spin up a Nooks project, and because mm -hmm. um, we like I force everyone to use Nooks. Of course, it's your <laughs> and, <job>. then, <laughs> and then like with the basic um, Tailwind config, and then basically like bring them over to like say the documentation and say right, you know, this is your Tailwind config because when you first put it in Nooks and create Nooks stuff, you don't get the config file you get everything that's by default so then we can put like the um the other one in um and then start playing around with it and start adding things i think when people are, see that they're able to add things they kind of start to like something more because they feel they have control and power whereas mm -hmm. if you just give them like um the empty tailwind config file well the, you know the default one and here's tailwind and you've got to do everything that it says in the docs they kind of like you know I have to do it you know and it's like there's a lot to take in so I like to show them that the config file and that they have control and power. I think that's really important. Yep. Um, Self-control by Laura Brannigan from Apple Music. Sorry, my... Um, <laughs> you have control. <laughs> I have control and Alexa has just decided to turn on. That's kind of funny. The background music is good. Um, <laughs> I don't know I, how to turn Alexa off. Alexa when I asked off. that question, I uh, yeah, had yeah. a... <laughs> a semi semi sales pitch in mind you've probably seen the the thing that we've released about a week two yeah. weeks ago a week ago uh tailwind play and uh, i am disclaimer i type really well until someone watches me typing it doesn't have to be a live stream or a conference talk if there's if there's the product manager hovering over my shoulder i start doing typos all the time so see what happens but i'll just uh, switch view for a little bit so we still up here and okay uh this, I've done a video and we've launched it last week. I think people might be familiar with it, but basically it takes away my biggest problem with onboarding people on Tailwind was the, the fact that they don't want to have to install post CSS and node. And I mean, if you have a, a Nux create app, it's really easy to do, but you still have to install something locally. And someone who just wants to do hello world, like literally type hello world and see what happens. They would love no to have something like this. <laughs> Beautiful, hello world. 
But uh, we, we launched this and the idea is like you skip completely the, the whole uh, installing Tailwind post CSS uh, pipeline, but you still get everything that you would do. So you have your config file and uh, you can customize it. So you can see here there's a spacing seven that's been added. And because of this, um, I can add a, a padding. So I'm going to put in the pressure here, right? Yes. I'm going to say, I'm going to say that if I was to show this to someone who's never used Tailwind before, yeah. right, or to, or to a designer um, that's new, mm -hmm. that might be scary, right? Because the first thing that they're, say the people that are kind of saying, oh, it's all just like in the HTML. So they're coming along here and yep. they're going to go, oh, you see, it's exactly what I just told you. It's just all this HTML. So can they start with something very simple and just build out? We will do a hello world, yeah? Okay. With nothing, a paragraph tag. Perfect. Uh, you probably started showing them colors and stuff. I don't know what, I don't know how it started. Yeah, definitely colors. Colors is always, you can see it font size yeah. and, and like, you know, centering it. They're the kind of like first things I always teach someone. It's simple. I can visually see it. Right. I haven't done zero type. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so I would just wrap this in a div and you might, you might notice uh, there's there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts and autocomplete and prettier and lots of nice stuff happening. What I would do is just maybe uh, show them you can do the text yellow 200. Okay, so you've got the colors coming up there, right? Yeah, like so when you just type that in. Okay. I've done something terrible yellow and white. Uh, yellow and yellow, it can't so be seen. You need what I would show you, I would, I would say we could have a background quite dark, like gray. And this is the cool thing that you even in DevTools, like the closest thing you get to this is when you go to DevTools in Chrome and go to the dot CLS for class, and then you can toggle with the arrow and see it in real yeah. time. You can see how the color is just like. Oh, wow. Look at that. On the, oh, that is cool. So you can discover this and the, like gray 600 and then add some padding. And again, you can play with the how much padding you want. Oh, that's a lot. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is nothing new here, but I think the if I would take a, a team with there's a designer a UX person in the in the room, I would definitely show them that. I would just ask them what's your favorite color. So, Debbie, what's your favorite color? Uh, next green, of course. Next. It's actually blue, but you know. <laughs> we'll next green. Do you know the hex code? Yes, you do. I actually don't. Off memory, ah. no. <laughs> I use Tailwind. It just comes up as primary. <laughs> I'll choose for you. It's not the right one, but it's kind of, it's my go-to kind of aqua blue. I like, <laughs> I don't know why I've always liked this color. So I just added, I extended the colors key. Why is it not happy? Uh, is, do I have, no, nah, it was just waiting. So I've added a Nux green color class okay. name, which resolved to this. So now by just doing this, uh, it's generated colors for background borders, uh, text colors, all these things. So now I can go in my BG and I should be able to find my next. And you can see it. So in the autocomplete, it's yeah. found it. And showing this and um, showing that there's so many classes. If I just type next green, I cannot type, I want you though. You can see background from VI and two, which is for gradients, border, placeholder color, text color. There's all these colors that are generated from one little value key value pair, which is a, a design token. If you speak in designer's terms, a designer would pick like eight colors and then 25 different yeah. spacing scale. And that's what you were saying. You, you create your design system in there and then you have tools, the, the front end developer, like the designer could create the, the values and then the dev team can implement it. And it's always going to be exactly what the designer hoped for. So, I yeah, think, and I, I can see that yeah. it's really helpful for like when you have a say a component and this is the problem we had, right? So we had a component and then you were like, you know, it, could, it just could be adding an extra feature into that component. Mm -hmm. And then you basically almost have to like redeploy a site or build up a code sandbox to send them that code. And especially nowadays we're working remote, right? So that person's not there with you. Yeah. Um, being able to send them something and say, right, here it is. How do you want it to look? 
and being able to send them that and then play around with it because they do like to play around with paddings and margins more than anything else. I just don't understand. It's like they see pixels that I don't even see, right? And um, that they can play around with that and send back to you and you can put that back in your code base. That's kind of really powerful. Yep, it's uh, almost a working prototype. Uh, and another thing that's really cool is if you hover stuff, you can see. So most of uh, Tailwind classes are just mapping to one uh, CSS property like this. But then there's uh, there's some fancy stuff happening with custom properties and opacity variables, which allows to do transparency. And I think it, it's really nice for someone who discovers Tailwind to, instead of looking at the docs, what is this class doing? You just literally go and look at every and you see the yeah. value, so it's 1.25, and then you just remove that, and you have all the other possibilities. So you can see my little icon, like I'm doing something that looks ridiculous, but you get the idea. So yeah, I think this, this is, is like, yeah, go ahead. If, if, you're, if your designer has not been worked on it, right? You're giving this to someone who hasn't built this code, right? Mm -hmm. And he wants to just change something simple. That makes it really powerful because he doesn't know what five is or six is or seven is, because it's not referring, it's referring to rems or something else, right? Yeah. So the fact that it's in there and that you can just go up and down and just choose and go, yeah, that one, that's pretty cool. And he doesn't I, have to install everything. I do think, uh, I'm a little bit biased, but I would think that before I joined Tailwind Labs, that Tailwind is the fastest way to design in the browser. And this playground right here literally takes it to the next level. The, 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 capacity, yeah. the ability to, just what I was doing before while you were talking, the ability to just like pick a, what am I doing? Pick a color like instead of trying stuff just go mm, oh i like this I like and this tint, and then you just like six, yeah you just iterate yeah 300 is what i want even tailwind uh, going saving looking at the screen again with auto like live reload it's still much slower than this like fast iteration and i think i think that's a fantastic tool um no it's very very powerful i think it's very cool do it's i said at the cool. start uh I said at the start I wanted to make it interactive and we kind of uh, talked and not I try to look at the comments, but it's hard to engage in the conversation and look at the comments. Is I anyone, see the comments. anyone in the comments have a question for Debbie and her experience or me or anyone? There's also Robin and Adam and the team is hanging in the comments. So if you have comments or little thing, I can, I can put them on the screen like this. Hello. And then we can talk about Hello. it. So ask your questions away and we'll try to do five ten minutes of q a before we wrap up and just before while people are sure. writing those questions um there was one thing you didn't show i've seen a share button on that tail Ooh. Like, how does that work you're a good person at selling stuff so let's go <laughs> back um i'll redo a super simple yeah ask question while i type this because it's not gonna be high flying programming We'll do a H2 this well, time. H2, yeah. share me. H2, close. This is actually really good even for people learning to program, right? I mean, yes. someone who's learning HTML, literally, um, this is actually quite nice. Well, uh, someone, I'll share in the comments because I don't want to go and scroll Twitter for an hour now, but someone shared uh, their son learning HTML and CSS through the Tailwind Playground, and it was awesome. Like, it's... It makes sense, like he had exactly what I'm doing now. He had text, like for kids, you do like a, a big text red. Mm -hmm. uh, text for Excel. So let's, uh, and yeah, yeah, there's this instant, I think the key to learning is to have an instant feedback loop and gratification. Like I remember yeah. trying to learn JavaScript and all the tutorials like mm, type this in the console and it should log 42 and you're like, Okay, and cool, but what, why? <laughs> what do I get from this? And when I was learning yeah. CSS with Firebug, like changing a color and seeing your screen, I have two kids and my son is now eight, but when he, when he was five, I took him on CodePen and showed him how to uh, change the background from blue to red and the whole screen changes colors. And he, he was just learning to spell colors and uh, seeing on the screen the change, <laughs> he was like nice. mind blown and it's amazing. So I've created this beautiful uh, ready for production and, creation. Yeah. I can hit the share button. And before I do this, I'll also just uh, switch to the config file just, just to show you what happens. And I'll go on this responsive mode that we, I mean, uh, text is not that responsive, but I'll set it to <laughs> 320 pixel wide. 
and when I share, it's not only gonna save the three tabs here, but you can see it also saves the size of my responsive yeah. container and the config file, and it's already copied it. So if I open a new tab, I, I would do it in a different browser, but because I'm sharing only Firefox here, uh, if I go to this URL, it's gonna be exactly this. Uh, and okay. you can see there was a big uh, SVG for a split second. I think there was the moon there maybe. Um, so you can see <laughs> that it's opened exactly what I had created on the config file and uh, with the exact dimensions that I want. So it's really cool. You can do your demo and then send it to your team across the world. Say, hey, either take it from there and share a new one or copy that into the, the prod. And if you so do a workshop... When you share it, they can't edit the shared file. They'd have to like recreate a new one, right? I think uh, Adam can comment uh, or Robin or Brad, but I think uh, currently you have to share a new one. When you when you press Command S, I thought it was saving, but it actually just runs prettier to format your, your code. But I might be wrong. So we should, we should write some text in here. We should say, um, share me from uh, Debbie and Adam, right? Or so I'm calling you Adam, <laughs> from Debbie and Simon, right? And then we should share it in the chat and see if anyone can share it back to us with their names. I like your ideas. So do you want me to press, I'm not sharing it again because it's going to create a new one. Just try to press S. You can put your name instead. I just called you Adam because I, and I called myself Adam. Adam. <laughs> you call yourself Adam. Adam's like, oh, I'm big headed now. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, so let's share that and let's see how many people can send it back to us with their names instead of, or just add it. Maybe we can keep it on the list and go and see. I don't know how many. I've how many put people... that in the comments. Uh, let us know what you if you get the Debbie and Simon, or if you don't. I think they will not get it. That's a beautiful comment right there. Um, but yeah, I think uh, to go back to, I think it's a great tool to to do this first like uh, entry of, uh, like remove the friction point at the very start. Like someone who wants to, you have five minutes to convince them because they're very important and expensive. And you say, look, let me do this, blow your mind with a better demo than what I've just done. Like it's something you, you prepare with really nice color rotations. And I think you can, have a wow factor in five minutes that's pretty big. Uh, more than, hey, let's just grab the CDN from, uh, the link from CDN and then go on CodePen or let's let's start by installing PostCSS and Webpack. Yeah, and, and as well, just like for workshops, I can see this being like a, a tool to use yes. just for like, you know, building something very quick and easy. And then like even just say with Nuxt, right? I'm teaching Nuxt. I want like, let's build this first in HTML and now let's change it into view code. And like, so that they can understand how things work. Like I can see just like, let's create it first. Let's put it all beautiful, right? Yep. Okay, and now just let's add the actual click fun functions. And yeah, like we could create some really cool things with it. I'm gonna yep. try it out in my next workshop. <laughs> so we have a uh, confirmation that you need you to- have to reshare it. Yes, you have to reshare it, which is fair enough. Uh, it's it's like, it just got launched and we got lots of ideas to, to improve it, but it, it's so even like this, it's, it's really Robin, cool. Is Robin gonna reshare it? Like he's gonna take that and modify it and reshare it or what's going to happen error one is still going to remain nobody can touch errors am i right and he's going to reshare it and have robin on his one but we can have that link we have robin on it and air link will have us on it am i right i don't think you can yeah branch off and forget it. it's literally when i press s it didn't save anything it just like formatted the code so someone will do what they do and then share and it creates a new snapshot of the three three tabs a new link yeah okay um cool I had a really interesting question that I completely lost track of. Anyway, um, let's look in the comments before we wrap up if there's some questions. Uh, I saw something here um, uh, from uh, Mr. Peter who hates tomatoes. Uh, I don't know if you've seen on Twitter, my, my daughter sent him a photo while I eating a juicy eating tomato. Like, like, <laughs> yeah. So the question is, are there any starters, tailwinds with Next.js, CRA? And I promise you, I'm not paying that person to ask this, but... Uh, the history or the, the irony is that exactly this week, uh, I myself has started uh, in the new work cycle at Tailwind Labs to build starters for Next, Nuxt. So I'll talk to you, Debbie. Uh, create React app, yeah. uh, Laravel, Rails, the, the few different uh, frameworks or libraries that we want to do integration guide, like have a nice uh, Tailwind Labs back, like re recommended way to, to get started. Cause you can find hundreds of tutorials on how to use Tailwind with anything, 
but have a place where we can uh, say this is how we would recommend uh, and try to have a consistent like step-by-step -step guide and then a code base example and even if we have time uh, to cherry on top a little video that runs you through that so it's coming yeah because we have a module already with, with nuxt as you know um yes like we use Tailwind in pretty much all Nuxt projects. So it's in the crate uh, Nuxt app and literally like you just get Tailwind. It just It's just there, you just use it. it you don't yep. have to think about it. If you want to config it, you add your config file. If not, it's just like magic, it's just installed. Nice. So that's kind of really cool. But yeah, it'd be nice to kind of like, you know, build on top of that and, and make it even better. And, and we have like the, the Tailwind, like darkened mode, um, you know, you're having dark mode. This is like a great feature, light and dark mode. These are like, it is, it's cool. Okay, now I feel exactly. like I have to click on that moon here. Woo! Yeah, you're not showcasing your product I know. very well. I, don't know. I, I wasn't like, trying to turn I this hope... into a sales pitch. Like it, <laughs> I, I thought <laughs> I'm going to show that in the context of teaching Tailwind or to onboarding people, but may as well turn it into no. like a, a product you showcase. You can tell you're not getting permission. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, uh, I've done a video that explains everything almost quite well, except uh, I've learned uh, the other day, yesterday, I've learned from Adam that when you press save, it actually runs prettier. In my head, I was, because I, it looks like a code editor, I thought I was just saving my file, but it's, it's just automatic, though, isn't it? We do, that, we do that in the content module and Nux, I'm pre pressing save and then it's like saying, do you want to save this file as in like the browser is telling me? And I'm like, no, we just save it, but it saves it automatically. So it's so clever. You like forget it's so clever. Your fingers are like already doing the work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's not a question, but I, I like that comment. Uh, I think the the correct, there's no cor right or wrong usage, but typically if you're going to use apply buttons, inputs, headings, I, I haven't used it myself, but buttons and, uh, and inputs is the classic because it typically has a lot of classes to make look good. And you yeah. more than likely want buttons to be consistent across uh, mostly like you can have different types of buttons, but uh, inputs for sure, like it's one thing that's you want to do once and use everywhere with the same look and feel. So that's a, that's a classic way. And uh, it's not a coincidence that Tailwind has an actual forms, custom forms uh, plugin because it's hard work to, to style forms that look good in all the browsers and doing it with utilities <laughs> suck and it's hard. So um, yeah, so do you, when you teach Tailwind, do you at all talk about plugins and how to add your own functionality instead of like, that's an, often a question where, when I hit the limitations, what do I do? And it's actually quite nice to be able to extend. Yeah, like we've only extended like the config in the sense of completely created our own classes, our own kind of yeah config so that we could use a lot of, um, it was a lot of like animations with paddings on like moving up and down and, you know, widths and um, I don't know, Air Designer just kind of went a bit kind of like over the top with all these kind of movements and stuff, right? And um, and yeah, we were able to just like configure it all um, because like I said, well, you can create a CSS class if, you're, if you like. And the team were like, no, nah, let's do it in Tailwind. <laughs> I was like, oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's nice to to actually embrace the, the plugin system or even extending the config. Uh, it's, yeah. it's it's nice to, once you stick to that with everything, you, you feel pretty good. Uh, interesting question. And they understand it as well. Sorry, say that again. They, they, they understand it as well. Like the config is just a JSON file. It's yes. easy to understand. It. Yeah, once you onboarded the whole concept of extending or overriding the theme, it's it's very cool. How does Tailwind? Uh, I'm sorry, I I don't mean to pick just uh, Peter's questions. That I realized I just picked two of him. That's bad for everyone else. Sorry, but how do you use Tailwind with Storybook? I would say you just use it. Like it, Tailwind is CSS, so I don't think there would be anything particular uh that you would be differently like you just preview the components in storybook the the css is just making them look in a certain way but i see storybook more for like the, the like the whole markup like the react or view component than tailwind in particular I, I don't i haven't used it but i think it would just be a matter of looking at how your component looks in storybook uh tailwind doesn't really change that oh and look at this Someone met, someone answers. Yeah. I've just Maya. used it normally, <laughs> so that's that. Yeah, that confirms what I was thinking. It's just uh, and Maya hates tomatoes. <laughs> oh, she's answering. I she is answering. I hate tomatoes. Okay, Maybe okay. she likes tomatoes. <laughs> and yes, Maya, Maya, to set up. <laughs> 
So I promised myself uh, that I would not go over an hour and we had 59.33. I would love to just take another couple of the uh, audience questions. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm awake yeah. now, so I'm like, I've danced myself awake, you know. Uh, I just realized it's <laughs> half past midnight in your uh, time zone. And oh, it's fine. I haven't had breakfast yet. <laughs> it's 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 uh, nine o'clock <laughs> here in Australia. Nine thirty. Um, anyone? Time zones are weird, aren't they? Uh, Debbie, please look. You can you can see the comments on the sidebar as well. Uh, um, you, I can't if... see. Oh, I, I have to open the button. Yes, I there's a, a, sorry, I should have said that before. Oh. The... So Debbie oh, has a, no a view into people. the live stream and she can see the comments. So you can't click on them, but if you see one, I'll put it. If you want to talk about it, I'll put it up on the screen. Um, I'll uh, scroll back up because there's a lot of comments, which is great. Thanks everyone for tuning in and participating. Um, let's go. Do you have an idea? Oh, I can click on it. If I click on it, what happens? No, I don't have that much power. No, you, you um, can't take over my stream. <laughs> oh, <laughs> You're just like, a guest. You know. <laughs> so do you have an idea how I can convince my boss for a project which uses white label theming? Um, so I'm guessing from that, you mean like, you know, you've got one theme and then you want to like, just kind of like change configuration and then you've got the same thing going on with just different kind of colors, et cetera, et cetera, right? I'm hoping um, that's what, uh, that's what um, is being asked. But basically like um, I, when I, I cre we created a, a CSS library, um, which is a terrible idea. It was a couple of years ago. Um, and we, it was actually really good. It's still alive and working and it's, 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 it's very, it's still there. Um, but basically, um, we use SAS maps for everything. And the reason we did it was that we could like go and, uh, somebody like a developer, not a developer, a marketing person could basically go there and say to the client, uh, what colors do you want? Uh, here's your primary color, your secondary color. And there was like, say six things that they could change. You know, if the product card was gonna be around, it was in a square or whatever. And they were able to type those things in and we would regenerate then that whole thing based on that. And, and that's kind of like, we did all this through SAS maps. It works very, very powerful. But I kind of like see that um, with the Tailwind config, you can do just that. You could literally send a marketing person out with that one file and like reconstruct your whole website just basically by changing those things. like. I think there's so much power you can do that you don't even realize. Yeah, <clears throat> great answer. Uh, very, very recently, aka yesterday, the Tailwind 1.9 launched and there's a new presets concept. So you can have a file that you import that replaces the, the base uh, theme. So you could have a, a, an agency that has a typically, no agency is not a good example because every client has different colors, but uh, a company that mm -hmm. has lots of different products which follow the same uh, brand guidelines and you could have a config file, uh, a preset that you import in your Tailwind config and every single project will then uh, inherit from that. So if you go and change the, the preset colors and spacing, all of your projects trickling down will get updated and it's... I, I actually, uh, I mean, you can do it. I haven't changed values after building a project because typically you, you build something that looks in the way and changing the values of the underlying class names seems like you're going to break stuff everywhere. But if it's just a brand color, uh, you like you do a refresh and the green gets a little bit more like, I don't have a word for it. More <laughs> <laughs> you can change the brand color without breaking anything, but I wouldn't mess around too much with spacing font sizes because like layouts can look a bit funky. Like uh, you would have to look at a lot of stuff, but that preset stuff yeah. is a, is a perfect way to have, Hey, I, I love Steve Sugar and I love the thinking behind all the, the, the classes, like all the scales of colors and spacing, but I want my own thing. We have our own Steve Sugar and we want our own. So before you could always uh, replace the whole theme with your own theme values, but having that preset is a really nice way to import it and maintain it in one place and have it work in every, every project that you use the preset for. Yeah, completely. Um... I was just, I was just looking, there's, there's quite a lot going on in the comments. I was just looking, um, um, See, it's hard to have a discussion and really read the comments. It's really hard. It's really I hard, right? I'm sorry people that we're missing some of this because it's like, it's, it's so hard to listen and read at the same time and kind of like take in because you got to yeah. figure out what they're saying. Um, I thought I cannot ask you a question and then read comments. And then when you answer, I'm like, I've got no idea. <laughs> what should I yeah, ask? Yeah, I, I know. I almost need another person who's like kind of like just there to kind of like you know jump that question in. 
Um, this is one, one. This is the one I was actually just looking at. What advantages has Tailwind one CSS over styled components? And you're going to answer that one, not me. Okay. <laughs> um, first thing to say is, uh, I'd say the first advantage is Tailwind works everywhere. Uh, WordPress, Laravel, Blades, templates, like anything, because it's just CSS where style components, I assume they might have a, a view version, uh, but it's mostly a React uh, styling library. And one thing that I will say is style components, as much as I love it, does not remove the, name, the need to name things. So you want you name a styled button and then you apply your CSS with the, the nice uh, syntax that it gives you, but you still have to name all these primitives. I would say my preference, uh, and probably style commands, uh, I haven't used it in a while, have added this, but there's another library called Emotion and they have something called the CSS prop, which lets you pass uh, CSS directly in a CSS prop, almost like inline style, but that allow you to do uh, hover state, pseudo elements, and media queries and all that stuff. So you regain that uh, not naming things and just applying styles to an element directly and it leaves HTML and CSS leaf together in the same component. And coming from Tailwind, I like something like this. So if I was using style components, I would try to not use the styled API and use the CSS prop that it provides if it does provide it. But what style component has that uh, Tailwind doesn't have is that you're capable of doing JavaScript stuff in your, in your CSS. So if the state changes, you could have a button that increments by one and then change the, the hue or the saturation of the color based on the, the value of the increment. And you can do this, you could with CSS variables, I guess, but the, the power of CSS in JavaScript is incredible uh, if you're good at both. I think you have to be really good at CSS and then know JS and what you could do with it. And this is something you can't do with Tailwind because it's at the end of the day, just CSS. So the advantage of Tailwind is it works everywhere. It doesn't have an, any runtime, it's just CSS. And the advantage of style components is it opens the door for CSS in JavaScript. And I'm going to come up on a comment as well that sure. kind of like ties into here is, is one person is saying, uh, Daya Tira, uh, don't get YP compare our Tailwind with Bootstrap or Bulma, right? And that's a very good point, but I think um, it's not like we're comparing and I would not like to say, um, that one is better than the other, or et cetera, et cetera, right? Although, you know, when I do my talks, I basically say, use Tailwind, end of conversation. Um, <laughs> but basically, um, the reason why we're comparing, and you're kind of saying, yeah, you can't compare because Tailwind is just a utility, you know, library, right? And Bootstrap is a full component library mm -hmm. um, and Bulma, whatever. So can you compare it? But the thing is, the way I like to look at it is, I'm going to start a new project for a client. I'm working in an agency or whatever, um, this big, massive project. And I have to choose as a tech lead what, um, how I'm going to write my CSS, how the team are going to write their CSS. And that's what we're talking about here. Are you going to write your CSS? Because you could write it all yourself, just plain CSS like we used to do uh, 20 years ago. Just write that CSS with absolutely no framework. You can do it. It's going to take you ages. It's going to be very slow. It's going to be very hard to maintain. So that's where libraries came about. Libraries came about and you had like Bootstrap. It's going to give you everything. It's fantastic. It's brilliant. Uh, now you've got all these components. You just copy paste them in, put them in, then you've got to modify everything. Tailwind is just giving you everything at the start and you're in control of how big it gets. You're in control of saying, right, that's as many utility classes that I'm going to use. And I'm now going to create my own styles. I can even add Bootstrap if I wanted to on top of Tailwind. It's still possible. You can use like what we did with AEM. We have AEM components with Tailwind. Tailwind is just specifically margins and paddings and box shadows. And AEM is all our components because it's built that way, right? Um, so everything is possible. But if you're going to start a project, think about how are you going to start that project? How are you going to maintain that project? What developers um, are you going to have to like teach? How are you going to have to teach them what to use? And how product, how uh, how effective is everything going to be, and how fast you're going to get something done? And I use Tailwind for that reason. That's why I compare it to other frameworks and to other libraries because it's what I'm going to choose to use when I'm building something. That's a great answer. <laughs> Look, uh, I think it's a really nice place to leave it. I don't want to keep you up too late. Uh, we. I intend to do many more of these live streams and you're more than welcome to come back another time to talk about Nuxt or different things. 
or even continue this conversation because I think there's a lot in the comments. My homework for next time is to be better at monitoring the comments. I think I might even bring <laughs> someone to help uh, be like this comment person that say this this one you should pull up on screen because it's good. I have the whole time you answered, I've tried to find that comment to put it on screen and I cannot find it. I'm sorry for the person who asked the question, but at least you get you the see, answer. Lucy. If I had powers and was able to click, then I would have been able to put it on the screen. <laughs> so uh, I don't, I don't want to derive, but we're using Ecamm Live to do this stream and as a guest, you can use the virtual webcam in Ecamm and then when, instead of sharing just the video, you share your Ecamm and then you can go and pull up all the, like you can have the co-hosting thing, which is super powerful. Any parting yeah. words, anything you want to uh, shout out, anything you want to say before we wrap up? I would say if anyone is kind of new to Tailwind, um, give it a chance. Like take it, take a chance on it and start off with the play. Like literally don't even install it in your project. Just take that website um, and literally play with it. Play.tailwind, right? Literally play with it and build something with it and then change it and modify it and then share it and give it to someone and, and tell them to like send you back something similar and, and just have fun. And you end up going to, you're, you're actually going to like it so much that you're going to go, oh my God, I want to use it all my projects. I'm convinced. <laughs> so yeah, play around with it um, and have fun with Tailwind. Try it for two weeks and you might never look back. You might look back and it's completely fine, but I think giving it two weeks is uh, my new giving it five minutes because it's, it's the more realistic way of really appreciating what it can do. Well, yes, and when you use yeah. it in a project, run CSS stats and compare it to another project that's using another big library and like, wow, yeah. Even just even like the, um, the CSS, the Chrome DevTools, even just that CSS panel in there, you can actually just see how many unused classes you have and stuff. So really like understand how Tailwind helps you be more performant. I think that's important as well to, to think of. Beautiful. Well, it's been a pleasure having you. Uh, you've been an excellent first guest. Thank you for your time. Thanks for staying up. Thank and you thank very you. much. Thank you everyone in the audience for joining. Thanks, everyone. I cannot tell you when we will be back, but we will be back soon. And uh, I've enjoyed myself. I was very nervous, but I think everything went well. <laughs> Since the comments are going, uh, I will stop the stream, but I'll put a closing scene where you get the background music again and you can comment for another five minutes before I shut it down. Thanks. Uh, and the, Simon, yes, I, I, think, I think before we go, if everyone can just reach out to you if they have um, problems with Tailwind. They can also reach out to me, but reach out to Simon if you have problems with Tailwind and you don't know how to do something. Um, yeah, our DMs are open, right? So just reach out and kind of like tell us you know, I will hey, dispatch you the next tailwind. questions. <laughs> yeah, you send the next to me and I'll send the tailwind to you. <laughs> there you go. Excellent. All right. Okay. Thanks for your time. It's been great. Bye. Thanks, everyone.
my development speed too. up on Tailwind Radio, the very same song again. It appears you're still here. 81 of you are still here. What's going on? <laughs> they don't want me to go to bed. Can you please let Debbie go they to bed? They want me to say no dancing. <laughs> so I think we should just stay on live and um, and just dance and do karaoke. Tell what, is karaoke. The, what is the cut over? Uh, well, there's more now. There's two more that joined again. I was going to say when there's like <laughs> 10 left, but it's uh, it's going to take forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know this is so much fun. Um, mm -hmm. No, it's great to see so many people that tu that tuned in and um, and all the all the comments. Uh, some uh, someone really likes your your song. Maybe you should tell them what song it is. Do you even know what song it is? Yeah, I, I did reply to the comments. I, I, I didn't reply with precision, but it's I went on uh, audiojungle.net, which is uh, the equivalent of Theme Forest, but for audio files. Like Envato is this marketplace mm -hmm. where you can buy uh, assets photos music video templates anything and i looked for like some chill low like relax hip-hop vibe lo-fi lo-fi i don't know how you call it and i listened to five six seven of them and the, the last one i heard i was like yep that's the one and now you're gonna have to deal with it every single stream until i get told to change it but i didn't compose I it like i used it. to compose music but that's that's a level yeah because i can see you have a guitar in the background yes do not make me play on live stream though. I'm not ready for this. <laughs> Maybe so after this episode, like after, after episode after 10, untrue. I will get you back on and I will play some music, but one thing at a time. Do you know what I really like? I really like that my photograph in the background and your tree, it's like coming into my photo, into yeah, my Yeah, it's kind of like wiggling. Oh, it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's like really cool. <laughs> All right. Um, so, um, yes. How did you find your first? So we, we're going to talk like we're going to talk. Oh, debrief, we, we were going to do this debrief. conversation private, right? But everyone just wants to keep listening. So we're going to have this like conversation on open air. How oh, did you find everyone has left the meeting? desk. Maybe they, they all left the desk and forgot to close the tab. <laughs> Maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe there's still comments going. How did I find my first stream? Yeah. I, I, Everyone told me you'll be fine. You just gotta hit live, and then you freak out, and then you don't freak out, and then it's good. And next time it gets easier, which I think it does. Uh, what I've realized, uh, I've tried to consciously listen to you and not uh, look at comments, and then realize, oh, I don't know what to ask next because I did not participate to this. Uh, so the hard part for me is yeah. to to 
scroll the comments while listening to the uh, guest answer and try to do the production thing behind the scenes. Luckily, I don't have to, like, uh, Ecamm is really easy. I don't have to worry about switching scenes and layers and stuff. I mean, I have some fancy stuff, but what we use today is mostly we, we went to, like, share my screen for five minutes and then back to this, uh, which is... Uh, easy and it gets it's really gets out of I, I watched your video of playing with ecamm and you said the same it, the tech is taken care of and you get you get to enjoy yeah. the the discussion like if it's just like a zoom call or something that you don't have to feel like you're production like producing a show in the background yeah and i think if anyone is like getting into this for the first time and they want to do it like ecamm is fantastic and it's not expensive it's like really well priced i think it, it's well yeah. worth checking out even even if you have a, a fairly low uh, hourly rate, it's probably half an hour or an hour of your time. Like it's, you will spend way more than an hour of your time trying to set up something. If you're on a Mac, that works as well. Uh, I've spent mm -hmm. a ridiculous amount of weekend evening hours trying to set up OBS, and it, OBS is great. I'm not saying it's not good, but it it's, it would randomly crash, and there's way more overhead. Like to have a guest, you need to have another browser window and then another browser window to share their screen and then the guest cannot see the stream unless you feed another video of your OBS back to them and it's just the CPU starts like freaking out and it's it feels like you're literally pulling 12 strings at a time and all like having all the spinning the plates where Ecamm I'm literally it's like using Keynote or Logic Pro like one of these Apple made applications that just works really well. I think for me, what's key is that you're inviting me in and you literally sent me a link and I just chose my camera and my microphone, put my name and pressed enter, bang, done. Kind of like yeah. Google Hangouts, as simple as Google Hangouts. Yeah. Like literally you Google Hangouts, yeah, it's same kind of feeling. Um, you're literally just entering into that room. Whereas with other streaming platforms, it's like you need to download this or you need to like open this or you need to do this. Some of them are just kind of complicated. Yeah. Well, I've I've been guest on streams where I, I would be in a Skype call or Zoom call and all I could see was me, which I know what I look like. Uh, and then I could see what screen the person would share, but with a slight delay. Mm -hmm. And I would have no idea if I was actually in a small window in the corner or if I was like full plasma TV, <laughs> full blast. Uh, I, it, it's nice to know what the audience actually sees. So you know when to scratch your nose or stuff like that. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh, i think that yeah. what made me choose ecamm is the the comfort level it brings to the to the audience to the guests like the guest is can see comments and can see what's happening without a delay and it all it takes is a click of a link in the browser uh, nothing to install so that's nice but we're not here to pitch uh, ecamm although it's really good yeah, no, and I'm, and I'm just what and I love the dark mode I'm in the dark um but I'm really kind of like you know, I'm, I'm wondering if those like 85 eyes that are looking at us, are they really looking at us? Or is that just like a bug in the program with it random changes. numbers just being... It keeps it changes, going from right? 81 so, to 89. So I'm Someone wondering... Someone write a comment. Really like if, if no one us. writes a comment, I'm going to hang up and do some... I have some work to do actually. And you have some sleep to do. Yeah. <laughs> and I have some to do. We got 52 likes, so that was good. There's 78 watching now on YouTube. So YouTube is saying 78 and Ecamm Live is saying 78. Yeah, yeah. So the numbers but are coming. They're the same numbers. So that's very interesting. I think if you if close the lid, there, if you shut down the lid of your laptop without closing the tab, does it still count as open? I don't know. I don't like know. I have a million tabs open on Chrome at all times. And yeah one of them oh actually <laughs> actually <laughs> one of these people is me uh because yeah, i had the stream on mute just to see if it's actually working so yeah, look I at have the a, I have seven, well. 77 or oh, 81 i will leave right now and see what happens eight it should go down to 80. no i don't know anyway it's been fun to have you yeah. i i gotta go <laughs> you gotta go Thanks everyone again for watching our bonus and debrief about Ecamm Live. <laughs> and yeah, no, it was really, really fun. I've just, what I learned um, today is to make sure Alexa is turned off and not listening because <laughs> otherwise she can pop into your conversation at any point. <laughs> you got to watch the words you use. Yeah. 
<laughs> so I had I took my watch off right because Siri that happened in a talk um a live one and I literally like Siri just went I don't understand what you're trying to tell me and I was like yeah, Siri shut up <laughs> the last uh, before COVID hit uh, the last three conferences I went to uh every single conference there was at least one speaker that had the I can't understand what like the CN they have to tap the watch it happened that every like, it's, yeah. a, it's a thing of today it's like the new uh slack notification sound or something it's the siri like taking over the, the live yeah, you don't turn your home stuff off right you're, you know you're in your home like you know you're listening to music and the next minute you're on a stage which is still in your home and it's like oh you know you didn't think about these yeah. things so that's one more thing i love about ecamm is i didn't even turn do not disturb mode like i i have millions of windows open and i have uh slack and telegram and discord like all sort of stuff that came during the, the the discussion but because i only share the video and then only share the firefox developer edition window when i share my screen it doesn't matter everything else i have on my desktop it only shows what i've decided to show and it's it's it brings so much comfort you just resize the window to the the shape that you want to fill nicely the 16 by 9 uh, ratio and then like you can have you don't have to clean up the desktop remove move you know when you have uh, all the icons that you have to move into like a hide under the rug somewhere <laughs> i noticed that as well that you could like i could like literally share discord like you could share your applications that are open as opposed to sharing your screen and then going back and forth to different screens yeah i, I found that was kind of really cool like oh i'm going to share the the code editor i'm going to share discord now i'll share i don't know video and a video as well which is really cool yeah that's what i mean i have two scenes this guest view and then uh one that's uh, firefox plus both of us in the corner and that that's all of you and you can go way yeah. fancier than this uh but it's yeah, yeah it's great i've just been using it to, to like you know create the videos i'm kind of like literally just got three scenes and i'm just like flicking between them one of them is to play a video at the end oh someone is still here <laughs> <laughs> at least one person <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I, I i have a video um saved like that, that my my video is the end one the thank you video so i literally go from screen one which is me screen two i'm i'm still kind of like sh moving the screen when i go from code to um to showing like the say the website right i haven't figured out if i should just show the editor and then change this the the scene and show the actual website so that's something i was kind of like going oh you know yeah or you can, yeah. if you have multiple desktops, you can have one where you have two third, one third side by side and share that screen. But then if you have anything flying notification, it'll show the whole screen. Yeah, but the thing is as well that you need to like sometimes touch things on both screens, right? So then you're like turning your head and you're like coding here and then you're like coding there. And that was my problem. So it's like, yeah. even though, yeah, it's nice to do it if you're like showing, I think if I was giving a talk, and like I could show that and then live code that would make sense because I'm I'm just showing presenter, um, you know, keynotes or whatever. And then like my live code is on one and my presenting slides is on another one. And that would make sense. Yep, totally. So that work. For those who stayed and for you, I'll give a little bonus view of my uh, Australian lifestyle. So it's summer is kicking. I know everyone's mostly in winter, but nice. And you got a nice garden, trees. Palm trees. It looks like my, my wide open. picture. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Can't complain. Very nice. Yeah. All right. Very I have nice. to go. I, it was lovely yeah. to have you on. Uh, thank you. You've been a star guest. And maybe thank we can do that much. again one day. Yes. Tell, tell Adam to send me a t-shirt. Ooh. Did you see we've, we've got this new <laughs> cotton bureau thing where you can you can... I don't know how much they cost, but I know Tailwind takes zero dollars commission. It's just like it's there and you can buy it the cheapest possible with the Tailwind logo. And we we actually do. I, I know Adam sent T-shirts for someone who found a bug in the um, in Tailwind CSS or somewhere else. So being a guest on the live stream is probably something that's eligible for it. Yeah, <laughs> you just tell Adam. Adam, Debbie needs one because, you know, I've only got one Nux jumper and I'm wearing it on all my uh, live streaming. And, the go to, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to okay, turn this down. Please. Thank you to everyone who Thank participated. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Good night. Bye for real this time. <laughs> with my hand Bye. Bye.